Today we're gonna to start sewing our pop art pizza sculpture. You are going to get a large piece of felt and you are also going to get a pizza shape template that we're gonna to use to trace our shapes. You need to make sure that you can fit two of these pizza shapes on your felt. So I'm gonna scooch one way over close to the edge and I'm gonna hold it down with one hand and I'm gonna use my pencil to trace around the shape with the other. The pencil doesn't show up really, really dark, but that's actually a good thing because we don't want any really dark lines to be visible on our felt after we cut this out. After I have one shape traced, I can lay down the other shape and trace that one as well. When I have them both traced, then I can cut them out. After our two pieces are cut out, we're gonna get our needle ready for sewing. I'm going to take my needle and a piece of thread. I have to get the thread through the eye of the needle, which can be a little bit tricky, but I have a few tips to make it easier. First of all, if your thread is a little bit frayed on the ends, that means that the little pieces are sort of starting to come apart, you can trim it so that the frayed part comes off. That can make it a little bit easier to poke it through. Then I hold it in my fingers so that only a little tiny bit of the thread is showing and that makes it easier to control and put it through the needle. And then once you have a little bit of it through, you can grab it and pull the rest of it through. I'm gonna pull a little bit of the thread through like so, so that my needle doesn't come off and then on the end of the very long piece of thread is where I'm gonna have my knot. Right at the very end. So now I have my needle on and I have a nice long piece for sewing with a knot at the very end. Now I'm gonna stack my two triangle pieces exactly on top of each other. They should be the exact same size or at least pretty close. So I'm just gonna try to get them lined up the best I can. Now I'm gonna take my threaded needle and I'm gonna start a little bit below the crust here on the side. You can start on the right hand side or the left, whatever feels better for you. So I'm going down below my crust just a little bit and I'm going to come up from the bottom and I'm going to pull my thread all the way through until the knot catches on the back. The knot keeps the thread from coming out. Then I'm gonna come up from the bottom again. And it's a little tricky because you might have to poke your needle a couple times to get it to come up in the place where you want it to. And then I'm gonna pull it all the way through again. Same step, go up from the bottom, pull it all the way through. And I'm making a whip stitch that wraps around the edge of my fabric. This is gonna hold the two pieces of felt together really, really well. Now, once you kind of get the hang of your stitches, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind. First of all, people who sew take a lot of pride in making their stitches nice and neat. So that means basically that you're trying to get all your stitches the same. You don't want one of them to be super short and the other one to be super long. You're trying to make each stitch pretty much identical to the others. Now it's kind of impossible to make them exactly identical, of course, we're just doing our best. So if we have one that's a little messed up, that's okay. We're just gonna try our best again with the next stitch that we do. The second thing I want you to keep in mind, besides making nice, neat stitches, is that you want the stitches to be small. If I had a lot of space in between each stitch, not only would that not look very good, but also when we add stuffing to our pizza sculpture to make it three-dimensional, the stuffing is gonna come out between those big holes in between each stitch. So the closer you make your stitches, the better. When you get to a corner, you're just gonna kind of go around the corner like so. And I 
am just gonna keep on going making my stitches until I run out of thread. So as you're sewing, you wanna make sure that each of your stitches goes through both pieces of felt, the front piece and the back piece. If your pieces are the same size, that step is kind of easy, but if one piece is a little bit bigger than the other, um, you're gonna have to pay more attention. So right here, you might be able to see the front piece of mine is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna have to pay really close attention through here as I'm making these stitches that I'm not just going through the front piece, I'm getting the back piece as well. If you wanna problem solve that, you can very carefully trim your pieces a little bit to make them more the same size, but just be careful that you don't end up cutting off too much. Now on this thread that I have right here, I'm getting pretty close to the end. You don't wanna stitch until you only have a teeny tiny little piece left because we need some thread left so that we can easily tie a knot. So I usually leave about, oh, I don't know, about the length of my hand or so, so that the knot tying step is easier. So I'm just going to make a loop with this nice long piece. I'm gonna put the end through the loop until I have a twisty part. Now I'm gonna try to wiggle that twisty part by putting my fingers in the loop and kind of stretching that twisty part to the bottom of the fabric. And then I'm gonna put my finger on that twisty part once it, once it is touching the fabric and then pull. We're trying to get our knot as close to the fabric as possible. There we go. Once I have my knot tied, I can trim off the extra. I can get a new piece of thread, thread my needle again, and start right where I left off making new stitches.